I'd also recommend maybe getting a bidet, a washlet, and uh, douching that butthole before sessions. And just think about how much easier it's going to be for you to wipe your ass when you're 50 pounds lighter. It's going to be just, uh, just I mean, freedom. I don't, freedom. I don't, have, I don't have difficulty now, but sure, it'll get easier. Freedom. Well, that's why the bidet is such a, a thing for you. You like it? It's a game changer. No, no, no. It's not because I have trouble wiping, Drew. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. You guys ready to go? Yeah. Sweet Chris Larson. <sighs> Sweet Chris Larson. All right. <laughs> ready in Jewish word for five, Jewish word for four, Jewish word for three, Jewish word for two. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dr. After Dark. The phone number 818 And of course, they'll keep these emails, which I've got a glorious number of great emails today. Dr. After Dark at gmail.com. And speaking of glorious, my special guest, Nadav Iskwitz. Hello. So Hello. Am I pronouncing your last name right? Uh, Iskwitz. I mean, it was really close. Close. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Cool. Give him some applause. That's Hold what on. I'm saying. And I would like to give applause and I, so that I could we could bake it in so everyone could hear Chris's countdown into the show. Jewish word for five. Jewish word well, for wait, four. Wait, hang on. Is everyone inside on the on what that's a reference to? Do they hear the countdown that you normally give? They hear it on where my mom's at, and whenever it's talked about or addressed going into the show, then they'll hear it. Like okay. we've done it on YMH. So a just couple do times. it. Just do a couple of for us here. Just Ready and, in Chamesh, Arba, Shalosh, Shtaim. And Zolo does it perfectly. Well, yeah, he's you know he's got the blood in him. I, that's I, not what you said before. I'm not sure. He, well, yeah, he, he sucks at Hebrew, but you know what? You can't really blame him. All you know, I know the, is he picked up the, the Hebrew systems. numbers very quickly from you all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very impressed when, when I did a little show with him. I got the but, entire uh, studio speaking in Hebrew numbers. Is, and he's out here, isn't he? Uh, he will be out here very soon. Good. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we have sweet Chris Larson. Sweet, sweet Chris Larson. How you doing, buddy? Who talked us in as Jewish letter, Jewish word for the number three, Jewish word for the number two. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, I'm, I, I'm not Jewish. I can't really say that. No. Oh, yeah, if you're not Jewish, <laughs> you Yes, you, you can. I'm not French and I speak French. <laughs> what Isn't the I, fuck is I'm that? Also not, I also am Jewish and I speak English. Is that okay? Yeah. Like, no, not okay at all. Oh. Wait, hold on. So, Chris, are you not allowed to count in in Spanish because you're not of the Spanish religion? Correct. That is correct. Religion. <laughs> so no, so, I just don't. I'm not. I don't know the words as well as you do. So I'm just not gonna like even try. But you know, it, that's it, the spirit, so, Chris. Love to hear that. So Chris, <laughs> you know, these guys love busting your balls, and and I've always yes, they do. Yeah, and I've always tried to be sympathetic to what they're doing to you because I know it's rough on you. But but ball busting is sort of the name of the game here, right? That's sort of your mom's it's a, house. It's a sign of affection. Your mom's house is. <laughs> Ball bust central, right? Mm -hmm. uh, any show, any show here involves ball busting. Okay, so but you 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 reserve a special level of ball busting for Chris, and and why is that? I have this image of him with those strippers in my head. I can't get it out of my head with him reading the us the either, buddy. The greetings. yeah, I think everyone has that image burned into their head. And so, what parents. was that like for you? What was that? Uh, wait, what, wait, what your, was like? your parents saw it. <laughs> yeah, they did. That what was, was their really reaction nice. like, Chris? <laughs> they were. Intrigued, I would say, and huh. to be to be polite. Um, yeah, I can thank my sister for telling them all about that. Can you tell us a sentence that they said to you that expressed that? I mean, my my, my mother. Like, said, oh, sweet Chris! Is that said, how your mom was, sounds? It was interesting to see my son <laughs> surrounded by strippers. I don't know how to feel about that. Okay, I don't know how to feel about it. It's a pretty safe zone. I I, I didn't know how to feel about it either, frankly. I like that. Uh, yeah. So, mom, honest, good. Um, but but I want to dig in a little bit into your um, unwillingness to participate in fun. Well, it's not that simple for old Chris, right? He, yeah, that's how it comes out. That's how it comes out. Mm -hmm. But but yet you're still here, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm still Texas. here. <laughs> yeah, you're still here. And is that and is that horrible for you? Is it really tough, or is it like it's like all right, you you guys are busting my balls. I'm getting used to it. Is it that kind of thing, or is it like oh no, this is pretty bad. No, I mean, I, I can put up with a lot of shit. I think I have a high tolerance for pain when it comes to working here. So, And, and, and do you understand that your reticence to be ball busted is what makes is them... exactly why they want to bust my balls. It yeah. what makes them turn the heat up. Yeah, what makes yeah. them really go to town. Right, uh, yeah. So, so might, might you kind of roll with it one of these days? Kind of next time the strippers are there, just kind of like... 
kind of go with it because I, I believe there will be a next time. I suspect given the success yeah. of the last time. Oh, there yeah. are more strippers in my future? I, I just, I can just, I know how these guys think. I just, I saw those images look, and I thought, oh, this is this look, is a thing. Drew, let me just tell you this. They're uh, inter- Chris, they're interested <laughs> in destroying us. Do you understand this? Wait, you destroying like, us? Oh, I know. You're interested in destroying me and Chris. Look, buddy, you can't well, destroy, they've already destroyed you can't you, destroy so the unwilling. That's what I was going to say. You can't destroy someone who doesn't want to be destroyed. You're right. You're right. It's much like recovery. You can't get so over as you really want. Right. Exactly. And it's like, and if you wanted to not be destroyed, you know, you'll just stay in LA or something. You know, what's weird. Chris Larson is on my video list. Is there something we should look at? There? No, it's just a talking point. I just wanted oh, to make sure we talked to Chris. Part. Okay, okay. I just wanted to I make sure maybe we talked to Chris. Some, I may thought maybe you had some video there for me. And I was like, oh. But Drew, I would like to say this, is that you're like, oh, you know, we do all these things to Chris and he, you know, he's just a victim of like our whim, right? No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But you do do all these things to Chris. Th- that part of the statement was accurate. I don't disagree with you. We yeah. do do these things to Chris. Yes, yes. However, yes. Chris is also a very willing participant. For example, for mm-hmm. example, you just recently saw the live show with Susan, right? Yeah. And one of your favorite parts was the Chris bit, right? Yes. All all I did was I said, hey, Chris, there's going to be some strippers in here with you. Here's a stack of $1 bills. You do what you think is right. Right? Yeah. Just one of those. And then you lock the door. Yeah, <laughs> this, I think you could only part. lock it from the inside. And so what <laughs> happened it. was, was that he's just started escalating all these bits to the point where he's just like, oh yeah, they should be topless in this. I mean, Chris, could you run me through? Cause I remember no, look, I was uh, seeing hey, things yeah. happen where I'm like, I did not pep talk him no, to but doing listen, this. Chris stuff. is a, is a, he gives, he's a, he's giver. a player. I'm, he's I'm, a a, I'm a performer. I give. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he, once he's in, he, he, right. He, he's, he's going, he's, he, it's a little bit, you know, chuggy but he goes where you guys want him to go he's the best and he and he commits he yeah. commits that's mm-hmm. the thing he commits so chris commits but but what i'm interested in is that resistance part because even today just saying jewish numbers that begin that sound like three or whatever you said is a sort of a it's sort of it's not really passive aggressive it's malicious it's, compliance no no <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, it's compliance in your face. Yeah, yeah, and it it sort of has a passive aggressive quality to it, but I wouldn't call it specifically that. It's something else. And so I'm wondering, is that going to maintain? You going to maintain that strategy? Because trust me, that's what lights these guys up. That's what makes them go. Uh, That's their. That's their fuel. I mean, are you asking me if I'm going to continue being me? Yeah, continue (laughs) being me. (laughs) So that's you. You have no. That's just a personality thing. But much like Annie's got stuff, he can't stop doing. This is just in you. This is you. But you know, I think I think Drew might be onto something, Chris. In that, like, if we didn't have to remind you every month to make a shout out social media post on Instagram, yeah, I probably wouldn't do it. We'd well, I'm saying (laughs) no. I'm saying we'd probably lose interest in it if you just started posting without us having to tell you. It's just like, oh, okay, he's already doing his own thing. Who gives a care? You know. It's the point is that you're you're engaging with these dudes. You're 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 giving them the resistance they need to keep pushing. Just just think about it. Just give it some thought. That's all. You know, I'm here to Are help. Are you saying I'm the reason they're oh, doing no, this no. to me? Is oh, that what oh, you're trying no. to say? That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> We're really big on victim blaming here. What as I'm well, saying Chris. though is that you're you're participating more than you know, and I'm sort of pointing that out. If you if you really don't like it, if you really don't mind it, then uh, proceed. He loves proceed. this. True. A classic. M- don't call me daddy situation. Eh? Yeah, it's a little bit. Of Chris call me daddy. loves everything we give him. I, I'm not sure that's true. Chris, y- even though he commits and performs, <laughs> love is a strong word. It's a I strong would, word. Thank you. <laughs> it's a strong word. All right, just but, tolerate. But, but, put but up do you, with but do you like severely me? like? Let me ask this. Let me let me because I want to make sure you're okay. And this is the one last question I have, and that is, are you like me? You're even though there's a struggle <laughs> to be here, you're grateful that you're here. Uh, yeah, yeah. I okay, would say. let's just leave it at that. Okay. Let's leave it at yeah, that. I won't elaborate. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it at that. Because I just need to know you're okay. Is it, like, you blink, I'm blink. okay. You don't if need next to call time the I cops. See, next time I come fine. around, I don't see you guys on the monitor here. Maybe you can give me the monitor. But you can st- blink like six times, Chris, if you are really in trouble. Okay, you're not blink. Oh, 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 shit. Hey, what the fuck was that? That was four blinks. That was like that was seven. Not. That was like seven. We're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. We're good. All right. All right. Okay. So, okay. That was not six. That's all that was. <laughs> okay. He's, 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 he's fluttering his eyes at me and he's making fun of me. That was much like the Jewish letters, the Jewish numbers uh, move. Ooh, we should have Chris convert to Judaism. That's not happening. Oh, why well, is that? Well, why do you sound so disgusted when I even <laughs> bring that up? I don't. I don't ascribe to any religion. You think I'm about to adopt Judaism? I mean, you're good with money. Well, I, but I think it would be interesting to put him through the paces. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. Would you say? He's good with money. Yeah. 
But but it'd be good to put him through. The, you, you can say anything. That is You're the only like, requirement to be Jewish. I have to be good with money. It's a big part. But I think I think you'll he, do well in our weekly meetings, Chris. I think <laughs> I think he would be good to be put through the paces and it'd be very interesting to see him sort of mm. going through the conversion process without converting. You don't have to convert. I would I love to give him a bar mitzvah. Yeah, just get him like to read the haptorah and stuff. And, a Chris mitzvah. Oh, just see him up there. <laughs> One of these things, you know, to each side. Oh, Drew loves it. He's on board. <laughs> I think it'd be hysterical. It's a lot of work, though, for him. You'd have to have, and a very patient rabbi or something would be necessary. Yeah. No, yeah. You give him a little tape recorder the way I studied for my. So, uh, hang on. I got, I'm going to get off Chris for a second. Sure, sure. Speaking sure. of that, I wonder if you saw the other day, a while ago, uh, when Whoop- Whoopi Goldberg made some very strange statements about the Holocaust. Did you see it? I did not. She's saying it didn't happen? She said, oh, no, no. She said that it was. it's different because it was just white people fighting and it had nothing to do with race. Oh, that's cool. I wish my grandparents were considered white back then. Right. And, and it, it is interesting how that gets, it is so fascinating to me. It really is. That, <laughs> me too. That, that in Germany at the time, it was explicitly race. Like it was all about race. And there was Aryan race, and there was the substandard yeah. race. Nuremberg they, they, laws, like, hey, if three of your grandparents were Jewish, you fucking get on this train. Race. Yeah. Not because culture or, or – and, and it's interesting that when skin color gets out of the conversation, it somehow doesn't – in America, doesn't carry the same intensity. And it's something I never saw coming. Let's put it that way. Because it, it's, it's interesting now how the history now – changes the perspective a little bit even though they are just leaving out facts yeah i mean it just kind of like i I don't know when jews turned into white people (laughs) right well it's it's sort of when italians and irish did too it was the same thing oh yeah because that happened to them too they used to be minorities now it's just like ah you can make fun of them well they were sort of considered they were kind of is that wrong (laughs) (laughs) it was considered we the words don't sting for some reason And, and it's and it's they were considered racially different Mm -hmm. it's really just a it 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 shows you how uh flimsy the construct of race actually is it's a flimsy construct it's constantly evolving people actually disagree about what it is biologists disagree about what it is Mm. uh and you it's and whoopi goldberg well it's it's interesting to me that a primitive way of thinking about it is just to still it down to skin color and because that's something you can you can see even though may have almost nothing to do with it. I mean, right. I mean, humans have an undeniable, weird, endless capacity for us, them thinking, in group, out group. Yeah. There's about to be a hit piece on me, or maybe probably will have come out by this. Oh, I can't wait for this. Yeah, juice here, LA, to LA <laughs> Magazine apparently has his hit piece coming. Which, oh, LA who Magazine. Who the fuck reads that? But anyway, yeah. but... But they're, they're, <laughs> but they're, but they're, you're about to say LA Times, I'm like, Ooh, oh, I've had maybe many let's put a pause on oh, this I've had recording. many of those. <laughs> I've had many of those. In fact, I, one of this, this woman did not check my credentials and, you know, claimed I had all kinds of, you know, I was only trained to this degree. In fact, I, I have three, just for the record, I have three assistant clinical professorships. I'm a fellow of the American College of Physicians. I'm a fellow of the American Board of Addiction Medicine. I'm a, a, uh, uh, what do they call them? Well, I'm, I'm certified in internal medicine and addiction medicine. I've got all these yeah, credentials. Yeah, you're, you're the credentials crazy are, smart. The credentials are way, 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 way. And I and I taught through Department of Psychiatry, Internal Medicine, and Adolescent Medicine. So I have assistant clinical professorships in three different departments. And I was the head of a large inside the hospital, so a freestanding hospital. Yeah, how many did this author center. have? Anyway, she didn't. Fucking she, zero. She seemed to, made it seem like I had zero background. And said, I, here's the part that I brought, the reason I brought it up. At the end, she said, I, he's anti-immigrant. And I thought, do you, my, my Pinsky my, is anti-immigrant. My family <laughs> came. Now people are starting to talk now about the Holodora, the the uh, our, the Ukrainian genocide. I'm getting mm-hmm. the pronunciation right. Look it up for me, Andy. There or, or Chris. Um, it, there was a J- Ukrainian genocide that my family it created the diaspora from Belarus and Ukraine to the United States, mm-hmm. and my family was part of that that running away from the catastrophe that the Soviets. Uh, Slam down on the Ukraine, Holodor, yeah, Holodomor. There it Holodomor. is. Holodomor, and uh, and people were at one time. There was some horror. Look, this was just horrible. Jesus. I'm telling you, it was horrible because my family got the fuck out of there. Christ, and, and people don't even know what happened. There was a Ukrainian genocide. So here's my my sort of. Um, Gentle reminder to the man. Uh, so you just got it from all ends, huh? Ukraine, oh, 
Oh, in terms of Polish, yeah, like no, that's Ukraine. I'm Ukraine, Belarus. That's the background. Again, the Ukraine used to be part of the Polish Empire. It was all part of the same thing. Oh, I P- see. And Pinsk is a place in, I think, Belarus. Oh, I thought he was yeah. like, man, they're getting my J blood. They're getting my U blood. You no, know, it's all it's all the weird history of you know mm. America. Frankly, again, back to Andy's point, we're all just Americans here, right? And uh, you know, anti-immigrant. I mean, kids. Ki- I have stronger words, but I'll just say kiss my ass to the LA Times. Anyway, it's the LA Times. You can go thing. a little stronger if you want. I, I, I've been I, saying I, crazy shit. I, I know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking not. Because I'm I can war with Whoopi Goldberg in the first 15 minutes of this episode. So they're going to come down on me saying that I anti-vax or some crazy shit like that. Or, Which or, you're not. I know. I know. This is the thing. This, have you ever heard of something called Gelman's Amnesia? Gelman Amnesia. Does that sound so, like a confirmation bias type deal? Sort of. Gelman Amne- Gel- Dr. Gelman was a famous physicist who every day when he'd pick up the paper, he'd notice that when they had a Gelman amnesia, there it is, when, and whenever they had a theory, a, a article about physics, the journalists would just get it fucking wrong, completely wrong. And then he'd read the rest of the paper, assuming they were getting that right, international politics and all this other stuff. They get it all wrong. I see. And you never see it more vividly than when they write a story about you. Right. That's when you first go, oh my God, what, how, what, anti-immigrant, anti where did you get yeah. this? What is going on? It's like maybe on? a little anti-Semitic, but other than that, <laughs> it's, it's very weird. Or, or you know, uh, and, and for and for the record of your mom's he's house, not he's not anti-Semitic. No, and for the record <laughs> for the mom's house world, follow follow Monica. If you want to, if you want to know my explicit uh, COVID and vaccine, um, Peter Atia A T T I A Monica Gandhi G A N D H I, one of the heads of uh, infectious disease UC San Francisco. And Vinay Prasad, P-R-A-S-A-D, is a very fine oncologist, really excellent reader of literature. And these three have, have – they actually have a podcast on Peter Atita's uh, site where the three of them are together. That's it. That's my thinking. That's it. I'm uh, totally aligned with those guys. They've never said anything where I thought to myself, oh, that's wacky. Mm-hmm. 100% agree with those guys. And I retweet the shit out of them every day. So mm-hmm. that's my public service announcement for the day. You're losing weight. Oh, thank you, Drew. It's so nice of you to finally it's, it's, say that on or off mic. Now, why was I reserved to do? Well, okay. okay. Now, I have a brain that has sort of Tourette's equality to it. Uh huh. And so once I decide I'm not supposed to talk about something, I don't compartmentalize into where because I'm afraid I'm going to get the environment wrong because okay. I, I live in many different environments. And so I'm fearful that I'm going to forget which environment they told me I can't talk about something. Mm-hmm. You told me not to talk about it. So I did not talk about it. Yeah, there was an embargo because the episode hadn't come out yet. It was like, as long as we don't talk about it in real time, then we're good. But then you didn't tell me when the embargo ended, and then you blame me for that. And the good news is, by the time we well, got... Well, no, because we, we're over at dinner, and Susan is just like, oh my God, look how good Nadav looks. Drew, doesn't he look good? And you're like, mm-hmm. I did not say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, just, maybe it was me still not knowing if I could talk about it. But, but we're at dinner at a restaurant. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if... Su- listen, Susan has a big mouth. If you she sure noticed. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm not sure a... what I can talk about around her sometimes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have I have t- told her very confidential stuff, and oh, she'll yeah. she'll come back like, well, I just told Cindy. I just it was just Cindy. I can trust her. Like, oh, fuck, like fucking I, Cindy uh, knows. Uh, uh, no, nope. and that's gone. It's gone. It's just it's out. Well, yeah, I just learned uh, also the a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago at this point, when I was streaming on Twitch, your username came up, yeah. and started revealing all of these spoilers. Of things that uh, oh, yeah. that we did, and I thought that yeah. was you. I was like, oh, geez, like I, I I had to quickly time you out for a little bit, but then I I learned that was all Susan. It, it started as Susan, it's uh-huh. a, and I I we'd have to we'd have to actually look them up so I can tell you which ones I did and which ones she did. I grabbed the phone at the end. Okay. And, oh wow, you guys split it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, feel she so played. We had so much fun watching you. Uh huh. It was you're good. Oh yeah, you saw me in my element. So yeah. like, you saw me gambling. You saw me smoking. Yeah, like, it was good. We enjoyed it. Oh yeah. fuck you! Yeah. All right, none of it's just like this is a problem. The dog's gonna really get the estrogen with the amount he's smoking or whatever. Oh no, I know what you're doing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different, different conversation someday, maybe. Okay. But, but uh, it, it's. It was great. It was a great podcast. And so we sort of wanted to jump in a little bit. Oh, yeah. And, and I don't remember what we jumped in with. Uh, but my guess is, well, we'll see. I mean, we ought to look at the stream. Can we look at the restream or something or the channel? Uh, I delete most thoughts. Uh, God damn it. What, what, did, what did I say? Do you remember what I said specifically? And I can tell you maybe. Yeah. Uh, first, you asked, how's the weight loss going? So you did that. That on, was Susan. The, okay. And then you asked. Because, you know, if, I was like, 
No. I was then you asked about. if me and Annie were still fighting. That was something that hadn't that come out yet. That could have been me. Uh-huh. That could have been me. Well, it was all stuff that had not come out yet. Yeah, I get it. I, get it. I just want to know where I where I screwed up and where she screwed up. All right. Well. No, but that's okay. So, all right. We're, we're, we're off of that. Right, Go ahead. You, and, I, I hear, let me just say, do watch his stream. How, oh, do, you, how do you find stop it? Stop it. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Vary Nadav show. We stream sometimes during the I didn't week. know Susan found him, and she was just on top. We were sitting at dinner. I always put a, uh, I always put him on my stories and stuff like that, but this is already getting way too much shameless self-promotion. All right, but, weight loss. So weight tell loss. Me about weight loss. Yeah, now let's go with some shameless compliments. Tell me how much I've lost. You've lost a lot of weight, and it thank looks good. You. you look healthier. Oh, You look thank healthier. You. And uh, I feel like you're on your way. Like, this could keep going for a while. I think what, so, too. What What are the parameters here? What, what are we doing? So uh, last time you were here, I was trying to do the 75 hard program. Yeah. Which is work out two times a day for 45 minutes. One of them has to be outside. Uh, drink a gallon of water. Uh, no cheat meals. Stick to a diet. No booze. And read 10 pages of a book. I think that's everything. Okay. Um, and oh. I did that for a month straight. So you got 35 days hard. 35 hard. I was, I was hard for a real 30 days. I was real hard for 30 okay. days. Okay, so you got about halfway. Yeah, and then I realized, like, look, I moved to this city in October, mm-hmm. and I now can't eat, like, at, at new spots. I can't drink with people. Like, it, it just feels like I'm super <laughs> limiting myself getting to it. But now, there's things that oh, I really like. Is that right? Okay, Annie. Yeah, it, what do you got to say, bud? It feels limiting? Is that what it feels like? I, I feel like someone told you that once before, and, and you argued it. Who was that that told you that? I it forget. Was, was it your friend? I think it was your friend. I think it was your best friend, the guy who saved you and kept you on the path. And what do you do to thank me? You talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. No, that was Eddie. I, uh, saw was I witnessed okay. it. So, so is he a good friend? You could be honest yes. with me. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he just laughed at you. <laughs> no, 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 Eddie, Eddie, you're a good friend to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't say it went the other way. Oh, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm a great friend, Tanny, and he okay. fucking knows All it. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Nah, we love each other. No, yeah. Seems like great friends. Well, yeah, we are. Great. Yeah, it's, we get along. Uh, if you weren't, if you weren't, I would make me very sad. It would really, I really would be upset about. No, it. No, no, no. We kidding. get, we get along swimmingly. It's, okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's a real, it's a real yin and, and yang thing. So, so have you switched from the seventy-five hard, which I love that you tried, <laughs> right? That, uh, so to the carnivore or something, or, or well, keto? so here's what I'm doing is that I'm taking the things that I like about it, which for the most part is all of it. Just I'm gonna drink every now and then because well, but if you but not beer, you know, just like scotch yeah. or something. Yeah, if you stay with the brown drinks, mm-hmm. they don't have carbohydrates, and right? And vodka, the, you can you can drink that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what I'm gonna okay, say. So, like it's, so you're going sort of towards keto carnivore type kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. Like I really like the starting my days off with a 45 minute walk. I really like the coming back home from work and either you know getting 45 on the elliptical or weight training. Like okay. I like that. So as far as sleeping your, better, like all of it's just I'm affecting sure. me well. I, I heard Susan's last night. I, I, I if you heard it in the background, I didn't really respond to it, but she said, "Oh, you're snoring less." And you went, "No, no, I'm still snoring." <laughs> no, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm still fat enough to have sleep at, but that'll go away. That will go away. I'm going to get a sleep study done, and that's the thing. Don't. Don't until you lost the weight. Don't. Why? You're going to be in a different state completely when you lose weight. I could do Mo- two sleep studies. Most of my patients that uh-huh. have this kind of sleep apnea mm-hmm. resolves with the weight loss. How much? So how, like, at what, is there a, like a weight, what, like when you're a certain height where it's just like, it, oh, yeah, if you're, it, if you it is, No, two? it's kind of per body person that person's body what about pear-shaped it, people it, you're right when there's a lot of weight on your abdomen or a lot of weight on your chest like it like more than that that's more than it was good uh when that kind of goes down like another 20 pounds or something i'm gonna bet you really you think i'm gonna start sleeping better after 20 more pounds 20 to 30 i bet you i bet you i'd love that i bet you because i realized recently that i never wake up rested <laughs> you, you should i'm sure not because that's the sleep apnea thing yeah you should um, maybe do some resistance training in here. You like the walking and all that stuff with some mm-hmm. some weights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get weights in like once or twice a week. I should probably up that to three. three. Yes, you should. Two to three. And then that will also help with the sleep and stuff. That will help. Mm-hmm. So good. That's fantastic. This is all good news. I Do not waste your time with the sleep study since you're heading in a, dir- a direction that is likely to completely change how you sleep. Right. Because if I do the sleep study and they're like, oh, you need a CPAP or whatever they call it. It's Ex- just like that's going to fuck me up. Exactly. So if you're still having sleep apnea after the weight loss, well, then, okay, that's a different matter. So mm. got it. So, okay. So as far as not being able to enjoy being here in Austin, that should not get in the way of your diet. All you have to have is sort of conscious eating. 
You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And I think I could do that. Like, you know, like like we went to Bob's right. last night. And, like, I could pick, like, the, oh, I could just have a steak and maybe some broccoli and shit, Correct. which is nice. That's fine. It's maybe forego that giant potato, forego the bread, mm-hmm. forego the corn thing I ordered, which fucked you up. I'm sorry. It did fuck and, me up and, a little bit. Dude, so, like, corn is maybe my favorite food. You no, know, that's that's unfortunate because that's high, high carb it's stuff. It's so fucking. Yeah, and we had a, we had corn brulee, which is covered with those brown sugar. You know what's crazy is that you were like, "Should I get a brulee for the table?" A corn brulee. I'm like, "That sounds fucking great." And yeah. then no one else touched it. I'm like, "Well, I can't like get this all the No, ways. I know. And then I devoured the spinach, <sighs> which but, I think is the better move. But, but even that was cream, so it's not great. But you know, there, there's you can make choices. That's all. You can be smart, right? And the thing is too is that I think I have so much to lose that it's like I could get a thing here and, and, and there as long as it's not frequent. You know, limited to once every two weeks. And what's or the motivation? What are they doing for you? What are the boys doing? How'd the boys get you into this? Uh, well, because like the way that it happened was uh, Bert was explaining how he's created an incentivized. I don't know if he's still doing this, but he created an incentivized he me plan. Drunk two days ago, I'm not sure it's very incentivized during the day with Leanne screaming at him in the background about this weight loss thing. No, just drunk in the oh, middle okay. of the day. I'd call that not a, not conscious drinking or eating. <laughs> Um, right. So maybe he's not on it anymore, but like the thing that he was doing was, uh, for every pound, uh, that he would lose or every pound that someone on his bus would lose, they would get 500 or 50. I think, maybe it was, it was 50. I think it was 50, yeah. 50. 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. They'd get 50 bucks. And anytime he lost a pound, they'd also get 50 bucks. Oh, wow. So he set it up so that everyone was just in a like scenario yeah, where they yeah. were building each other up yes. and like, Good like motivating each other to yeah. like do and that. So you just jumped in on that. Well, no, I was just like, dude, that's, that's genius. Like, how do I, like, how do I get in on this? Like, how do we come up with an incentivized thing? He's just like, oh buddy, we got you. you well, and you know, Tom, and then it kind of spiraled. And Tom kind of, has <laughs> like lingering anxieties about you guys. Go on. Well, I mean, he worries about your weight. He worries about your pot. He worries weed. He worries about Annie's stool. And he, you know, he's, like, he's like, wait, he's, what? What, what, what does he talk to you a, about? He, he just wants to walk. Are they okay? Should I worry about it? He, should, he, should, shouldn't Denny see a therapist? I'm like, eh, give him some time. He just uh-huh. has, he cares about you guys. And, mm-hmm. he, and he sees these things that you're all starting to address now. He's not mentioned Chris. Interesting. I'll find out what's going on with that. Because um, there's nothing wrong with me, Drew. It's like, should Chris be going to strip clubs more? Maybe. Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe that's the that's what this show will do. That's the show. Uh, but but so it's just interesting to me that he actually has some real concerns about you guys. That he just he just worries a little bit. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. It's just in a caretaking way. It's not like in a oh my god that guy's got he's a mess. He's like no, just like are they okay? Is all right? Because the doctor is looking at you guys all the time, so he sure. wants to know that he's you know being he's a very responsible dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he like really cares about stuff. No, yeah, and, he, and he's very caring of yeah. like his staff too. Oh like yeah, he's, he's always like he's asking me questions and stuff about it too. He's like, oh yeah, this is good. This is good. Like, right. Fine, so he, yeah. he actually, and so I get some of that too about you. So, yeah. What's that, Chris? No, no, that was me. Oh, yeah. I was saying uh, the last time he took us out to dinner, he made me promise him that I would watch a fucking Rogan episode about the sleep sleep doctor oh, yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. He like made me promise him to watch that because he's worried about me sleeping. Right. And, and he mentioned that last night at dinner that the <laughs> have you watched that yet? <laughs> nope. And here's here's the thing about any and didn't and give Tom. me a timeline. <laughs> Classic mistake. Here's the uh, here's the thing about any and Tom. Little scumbag. Tom, <laughs> any is but but here's the deal. Yeah. Any is an extraordinary person, right? Right. He's, I don't know he, what you mean he, when you he, say you're that. you're one of one it, with extraordinary habits. Mm-hmm. And to go, any is only sleeping four hours. Oh my god, that's wrong. I don't know. I don't know because no, no, there no, are people. Is. No, there are people that sleep only four hours. Not me. Right. No, but, but do you hear his arguments for sleeping on the couch for sleeping in the bed? No, because the it guy because if there. he sleeps on the couch, he his body forces him to wake up after four hours because it's uncomfortable. If he sleeps in a bed, he gets a full night's rest and he doesn't like how much he sleeps. How, how many hours do you that's, sleep in the bed? That's, yeah, go that's ahead, Annie. Poor, that's poor phrasing. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Poor Phrase phrasing. it better. Okay, Phrase it better. That's poor phrasing. It's, Phrase that, it it's not that I'm uncomfortable when I wake up. It's that I'm ready to go when oh, I wake see, up. See, it's, yeah. like, it's like he's... Right, but why are you... If, right. you, if you laid in bed, how many hours would you sleep? Uh, more. Six, eight? <laughs> like, yeah, like eight. Yeah. You see, that's the side I always see. And okay. you only see the other side. It's just like, I only need four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear I told you this, though. I so I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I, I know plenty of people. That Let me help you. Four. He's sleeping stupid. He's a stupid sleeper. <laughs> he doesn't seem tired to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, he kind of takes care of that. He's having like five Red Bulls before we show up. What are you talking about? I only had one. 
I, look, man, if I had four hours of sleep, I could have ten Red Bulls. It wouldn't matter. I'd be, I'd be dry. I would not be on my game. Mm-hmm. And, and he's on his game. So well, right, because his body is used to that as fuel. You know, I, I spent many years only sleeping five or six hours a night because I would get up at five thirty and go to the hospital and I get home at ten o'clock at night for right. years. And I was not. I breed. was miserable sleep wise. I was not rested ever. I was aware of it all the time, and I just kind of pushed through. I learned to live that way. But I, I was aware that it was not good. And as I think I pointed out to you guys, um, I worked at an Alzheimer's clinic. Did I talk to you guys about this? I don't think so. Okay. Annie, take a listen to this. Maybe this will persuade you a little bit. So I, I worked, uh, one of the nursing rooms I worked at was an Alzheimer's unit. <clears throat> and when I got there, uh, first of all, I noticed there were a lot of men, a lot of men with Alzheimer's and, and, or dementia, these advanced dementia. This mm-hmm. was a locked unit. You know, people were essentially in bed. And I uh, would memory notice- memory care facility type deal? What? A memory care facility type deal? This was like a nursing home. Okay. You know, they had be- bed care for dementia patients. They had some that were pacing and moving about and stuff, so it was locked. Mm-hmm. And he, I noticed that when I'd go in the patient's room, the, the men explicitly, there'd be pictures by their bedside. This was the ship he was the admiral of. Here are his car dealerships. He had four car dealerships. They were these extraordinarily successful guys. So I thought, oh, it must be stress maybe that puts a risk of dementia on these guys. And so I talked to the family. I go, what, what did he, was he stressed by his work? They'd all go, oh, no, no. Fuck, he loved his work. No, 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 no stress there. He was stressed coming home. Did he sleep? No, never slept. And so I thought, oh, okay. Well, there you go. No sleep. Now, I don't know if those guys were the four hour night guys already or if they forced five or six hours a night on themselves like I did, but it caught my attention. And it made me think and take the position that, particularly as you get older, maybe not at any age, but as you get certainly towards my age, Sleep becomes really, really, really important. You got to pay, pay attention to it. Okay, we all good on that. Mm-hmm. I, That's I my am. position. Okay, mm-hmm. Annie, are you okay with that? I mean, I'm right. hearing it loud and clear. Now, now, they, there was didn't answer the question. N- <laughs> I, he's just he's hearing it. He said he heard it, and I just want him to hear it. That's all. So, so, so here is um, something I want to get into. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And, of course, you know I love BetterHelp. I refer fam- family, friends. I've been very impressed with the services they provide. And, you know, most important relationship we have is uh, with ourselves. And a lot of us do anything to help people we care about, go out of our way to treat other people, but we don't necessarily treat ourselves the same. So this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you matter just as much as everyone else. And therapy is a great way to make sure you show up for yourself. I mean, you work out, why aren't you not working on your mental health as well? BetterHelp Online Therapy offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And I've been, I've said it here a million times that I feel like the waiting room is a sort of a barrier to entry for therapy. People feel stigmatized, they don't want to run into people. And of course now people are used to using, in the day of COVID, we're used to using Zoom and phone and BetterHelp Online Therapy provides you, uses those systems to deliver excellent online therapy. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Dr. Drew Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash after dark. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash after dark. Well, our friends at Liquid IV, I am so grateful to them. Uh, I've used them during my recent colonoscopy. I use them to get over COVID. And uh, the thing that I, it's its volume replacement, it's fluids, which is something really important. It's not just water you need replacement, but electrolytes and fluid. And uh, the stuff tastes great. And, uh, you know, it's a new year. You want to stay hydrated. You'll be working out more, perhaps. And, uh, I don't know, we just got back from New Orleans, and staying hydrated after that became an important issue. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more effectively than water alone. As I said, when you're dehydrated, your volume is low, you need fluid. And, of course, this also contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, and 6, B12, and vitamin C. With three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, and it's made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, gluten-free, free of dairy, dairy and soy. And Liquid IV is so effective, they have the science of cellular transport technology behind it, designed to enhance rapid absorption of fluids and the ingredients into the bloodstream. 
One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates, as I said, faster and more efficiently. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. Liquid IV has donated over 19 million servings globally, and volume replacement is a big deal worldwide. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Dr. Drew at checkout. That is 25% off anything you order when you use our promo code Dr. Drew at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code Dr. Drew. We had our own horrible or hilarious last night. Oh, we, yeah. We had a horrible or hilarious right in front of Nadab. And yeah. I would put it in the hilarious category. But yeah. describe what you saw. So I'm I'm picking up my car from Valet. Mm -hmm. We're at Bob's. We, had a, yeah. we all had a great we're, steak we're, dinner. Right. We had a nice time. We enjoyed ourselves. We always do. It was great. Yeah. We all drank. I had a couple of scotches. And we're getting to pick up our car. And I think you, you guys were like walking to your hotel, right? Because you were right no, around the corner. No, she announced. Well, at that point, yes. Mm -hmm. I thought the hotel was that way. It was wrong. So we go across oh, the street. Oh, that's why you guys went away and then came close. Exactly. We went across and she goes, watch out for that divider. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm lying. nowhere near it. I'm nowhere near it. And then we got across the street and I went, oh, we're, oh, it's the other way. It's the other side. I, I see it now. Okay. So we turned immediately back and went through. And what did you see? Well, so yeah, I turned, I turned over my shoulder and from my peripheral, I was just like, oh my God, that lady just ate shit. And then I saw. Oh, the guy helping her up is Drew. Wait, was that Susan? And then I started running. I'm like, oh my God, what happened? She tripped over that particular divider that she was yelling at me that about. That she told you to look out for? Yes. Uh, and then blame me for not telling her to look out for it. Of course, it was that was my fault. I said, nah, 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 nah. no, I will not take the blame for it. And uh, and she did one of those slow slow motion splays, like fully splayed oh, a out. slow fall. But, but a full, like it wasn't like a roll or it was like, like a... Close yeah, one. Yeah. Not so close. DrDrew.com slash shop. That's right. You get those at the DrDrew.com slash shop. She'll be happy to know that, that we discussed that in the context of I like the fall. Help, yeah. And then I thought. Oh, yeah, that was actually perfect. Yeah. And, and this is her project. So, and, and then I thought, oh, I got to get her to bounce right back. I thought we got to get her up, like up. So, so she doesn't feel humiliated or. So it's I, like I, with the kid when they fall, like, you're fine, I, you're fine. You're yeah. Fine. I tried grabbing her. It wasn't going to happen. It was, uh -huh. She was, she was still going down as I was trying to bring her up. And uh, no, no, it was, it was a full middle of the street now, layout. What's the aftermath like? Does she have a scrape? Does she have. She, she ran, stuff ran or? a stock in very little injury, which I found extraordinary. Amazing. First, first I thought there'd be broken nails all over the place, but she's she got, had an umbrella in one hand that broke that side. And then she's just like an athlete, you know, and she, Ooh. and she hit the knee barely. And so ran a stocking guy. Oh, have a raspberry. I mean, you can't even see it. Here's a question. Uh, -huh. uh, does testosterone help with bone density? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, that was the, I, it, she's too much of a specimen to have a bone break at her age right now anyway, mm. but it does help. It does help with estrogen and progesterone, both estrogen and testosterone, both help with bone density, but mostly it helps with muscle mass and, you know, balance and all this kind of stuff. And so she was like, no big deal. Oh yeah. You know? And so <laughs> I'm relieved to hear that she's okay. But, but she really appreciated your level of concern. Yeah. And, and was pissed at me for not having a similar level of concern. <laughs> you're like, ah, you're fine. Get the fuck up. You're embarrassing me. Susan. I kept deflecting. <laughs> I kept like, no, 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 I was not embarrassed. I kept like, no, 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 you cannot blame me for this shit. I know you want to blame me. I would you're, love nothing. You're, more. you're trying to push it off on me off yourself, but you, you did that all on your own. You know, I, I was nowhere near any of it. Now stop. And she copped to it eventually. So that's but, great. Uh, yeah. uh, so Interesting instinct, though, right? To blame your husband when, when you did something all on your own. So now follow up from uh, from the last episode that she was on. Yeah. After you came in and saved the day, was she like, you know what? You could put your stuff on the bathroom counter now. No. She's no. like, get your shit out of here. No, this bathroom tyranny. Mm. No, I thought that we look, we we hashed it out here. Mm hmm. And at the end of it, I I just wanted to, to point it out the level of tyranny in the bathroom. I'm willing it's a high to high level. I'm willing to comply with it, mm -hmm. and I did. I made everything nice when I went home, and I and I and and my point was happy wife, happy life. Absolutely, and <laughs> we had a good time last night. We were good, uh, and, and we we practiced our. Uh, what should we call what our, our anal? No, we didn't do that. But it was offered, but <laughs> so, so you okay, Annie? You're all right with this? <laughs> so, Sorry, I had to squeeze uh, one of those in. <laughs> I had to squeeze one in. So, so where was I? Oh, yes. so so my point was anal. my point was all you have to do is tell me. I aim to please. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know that you're that having little tiny bottles in front of a 
magnifying mirror is def- offensive to you. Right. Now that I know that, they go somewhere else. That's fine. You surprise, surprise, you can't me. read minds. Yes. Yeah. And this, that is a, a, a generally a sort of female feature. They, they like to you to sort of know automatically what they're thinking and feeling. Right. What, what, about, the, uh, what about the other uh, thing that she didn't tell you for 40 years? Well, what else did we talk about? Did I put it out of my memory already? Oh, her, that sounds uh, familiar. What was it? Oh, the vibrator? No, no, no. Well, I just, mm, there was that. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. I don't remember quick. the vibrator. I do remember her zone, though. No, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, like, All right, first the zone, then the vibrator. <laughs> um, I did, and she went, uh, she laughed at it. And so the, the armpit thing did not uh, huh. right. really do much. But Wait, was, oh, so you did go then, for it? And then what happened was... Wait, did was, we give context on here on what that was? She, so we were talking about erogenous zones and how women have did a... Did we distrib- do that on the podcast or did we do that at dinner? We did it on the podcast. We did it here. Oh, yeah, we did okay, here. okay. We did a lot of weird stuff at dinner, but not, not, not the really weird <laughs> stuff. That was for the podcast. Yeah, we quadruple kissed. Um, so so, <laughs> so uh, it might happen one day. Who knows? But... <laughs> But I'm sorry. <laughs> but she, she she instead she instead it went the other way. She went, Oh, I do like my low back touch. Oh, that right, that is a zone there. It's like, oh yeah, I, I know. You're like I, I fucking I, told I'm you. I'm paying Susan. attention. <laughs> I'm watching it. We have a bunch of great emails. I want to I want to get to some of them. Okay, wait, but before we do, uh dildo thing. Dildo thing. Vibrator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, excuse me, the vibrator. Mm. So it, I forget what. How did she bring it up that well, she, she, just, she she always she brings was it? Going on. This was a few times ago. She started saying it twice a day. I'm doing that twice a day. Right. I'm like, really? That's interesting. Because then, so then when you say you're tired at night, it's because that fucking vibrator. It's like, oh no no, that's sort of my personal best is twice a day, and really it's not twice a day. So I don't really know what the hell's going on. <laughs> We're, more, more to be revealed. I get the truth right here at this table. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll continue at the new studio. When, yeah, when we get over we'll there. get into it on the next batch that that, that yeah, we record. It's but, a, and and by the way. There was another really insane thing at dinner last time, which I which I did not know, mm-hmm. which that she appreciates and loves the, your mom's house world and the feedback she gets from you. So keep that coming. It keeps her in here and it keeps the, the <laughs> keeps the content coming. She's always she, so nervous in the first five minutes and then yeah. she starts loosening it up. And it's like, Susan, the people when, when, love when you. When you see her doing this, she starts to do this and she literally takes papers and does this. And I see her doing it every time she messes with this thing. And I think, oh, and she's nervous, but <laughs> then it stops. But but p- please do keep that coming. And and the fact that there's been no negative is extraordinary to me. All the negative I, of course, get. Mm-hmm. And uh, and she, interestingly, I brought that up at dinner last night, too, and she didn't follow on. I thought she was going to ask me who and what and what was going on. Most of the negative... Right. She's really protective of you, which is actually like really which like... Is nice. It, it's, very, nice. it's very... Like, well, she, uh, because she's seen uh, it. To watch. She didn't used to know all the shit I took because she didn't see it. And now that we sort of produce stuff together... She's seeing it, and it's it's colossal. It's horrible. Oh yeah, when you're public, it's, it's impossible oh, to not Jesus. catch shit by someone. You know, tons of it. Yeah, and and, and uh, what was I telling her that? Uh, oh, the the people. Mo- a lot of the negative shit I get about her and me here is people who miss the comedic. This is a comedy environment. There's an intent to be comedic. It's not exclusively so. Right. We used to call it. Kroll and I used to call this the the Gainsburger and the Pill philosophy. Which is, I have all these emails and messages. I want to give you guys information. The reason I can give you guys information is because you're entertained. Right. And then I can drop in the information. And mm-hmm. I understand that. I understand that's what we're doing here. It's we're, we're hiding the pills and the cheese. Exactly. Like your dogs. Precisely. And, and as such, I, I have to be willing to go wherever these assholes want to take me to make sure that you get what you, you want. You want to so fucking go, Drew. I don't know that that's true. <laughs> you do. <laughs> All right. I had a bad appendix on New Year's Eve. Previously, for about a month, I was sometimes having pain in the area. My stomach, heartburn, bad enough to send me to the ER. I also felt fatigued. Sound familiar? So Nadav and I have both had diverticulitis, which is essentially appendicitis on the other side. It D-club? behaves the same way. Yeah. Same way. <laughs> uh, bad stomach pain, almost not on the lower left, lower side where the appendix was. Now the appendix is out. I don't uh, have heartburn or fatigue anymore. Could I have the appendix problem for a month and could it cause those symptoms? Uh, absolutely. Cut that uh, shit out of there though, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely. Just like, uh, how long were you fatigued with diverticulitis? Oh, it took me like six months to figure out something was even yeah, wrong. Yeah, and <laughs> I get it. I get fatigued all the time from it and, and, I, and I specifically get anorexia. I mean, I don't want to eat and heartburn. And <laughs> I, I get heartburn. I those haven't gotten that. that <laughs> yeah. Deflowered penis is broken. My 20-year-old relatively, I'm a 20-year-old healthy dude. Been a virgin up until recently. I finally found someone who enjoys touching my peener, but I've been spontaneously losing wood after the first 10 minutes of sex. I'm uncircumcised. I'm afraid my little neck is cutting off blood flow. 
You can get a My you, little neck. You, meaning he's uncircumcised. So when you pull the penis oh. out, it gets too tight. Mm. That does happen, and that's an indication for a circumcision. That's that's the uh, phimosis or the. Uh, now, because isn't uh, I, I haven't fucked around with these, but can't a cock ring also keep you hard? Yes, but that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about discomfort because the the head comes down and squeezes. But then he tight. said he was losing. Oh, he's losing wood from the discomfort. Discomfort, gotcha. exactly, okay. and that does happen. I don't want to take any pills. Good. Um, my poor girlfriend has suffered long enough. I want to please make her. Okay, whatever. Uh, be pissed on me, beat me, mama, tata. There are word. You gonna need to cut uh, that dick skin, my dude. I think so. I think that's it. Now you got to think through whether that's really what it is. It could also be, you know, guys your age will lose it because of anxiety. When you're sort of too into what's going on, mm. that you really are into it, and your female partner, we've talked about this many times here, will blame themselves. So it goes, you're not attracted to me. That's why. No, no. When guys in their 20s and 30s lose erections in the midstream, they're too into it typically. Right. And they get anxious, and or they, they get anxious and they can't ejaculate and they go too far or they, they're just plain old anxious and lose their erection. It's, it's all over the place. Yeah, but it's I because think... they're too into it. And I think once like a dude gets old enough, like I feel like every dude has experienced it at least once, you know, oh, of yeah. just like, it's like, ah, shit. Like, it's almost like you just get mad at and, yourself. And, and you by know? the way, <laughs> it's very common first time out. Very, first time out. Very, when you lose your virginity. Oh. Losing, losing your virginity is very common for there to be to some form of sexual dysfunction first, first time. Too long, too short, too little, lose your gotcha. erection, whatever, something. Because it's intense for people. Right. Hey, Hitler, I thoroughly enjoy eating my lady's ass. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I, I'm always anxious. I'll get E. coli one day. What's the best way to prepare her fart box for a good tongue punch? I say just build up that bacteria tolerance. Am is I right, Drew? Is good rinse in the shower enough, or is there something else she can do? Uh, how do you get a job here, fuck face? Um, get some activi- uh, activia know, in there. R- really? Uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying Fed Smoker is having a full resurgence. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's like, he lives. Fed Smoker lives. That's oh, our new... I don't think his brand new. was eating ass, though. No, I'm just saying his his aphorisms are back everywhere. Oh, yeah. They're everywhere now. They, mm-hmm. they were kind of going away, and now they're back. Yeah, it kind of goes in waves. Fed Smoker lives. But yeah, how do so, you tolerate um, ass The kind of E. coli that is infectious is not the kind of E. coli that necessarily lives in your colon. Okay. So E. coli is a very broad spectrum of bacteria, one particular type. And the E. coli that causes uh, intratoxigenic, you know, diarrhea, that's a totally different mm. thing. That's an infectious disease. Uh, y- if she had that infectious disease, you would get it from eating ass, but you're not going to get that in this country, but uh, in our Western countries, at least. I have heard, I believe I heard Mark Normand talk yes, about this. About? Um, because I think he said he, uh, he ate someone's ass and <laughs> then... Got Hugh Laurie, H H P. Oh, H Lori? Pi Lori. H that's Pi Lori. It. Hugh Laurie. That's so funny. Sorry, uh, you got house. You got house syndrome <laughs> from it. You got H Pi Lori and like got super inflamed and infected. Now I don't know if it was a one night stand or his girlfriend. That's how he got it. So how would Did his doctor it? tell him? Because it just happened. I, don't know, I think he either said it on a podcast or like I, in a, I, in a maybe his doctor told him that. But I let's look, okay. H Pi Lori from uh, what should we say? Uh, eating ass yeah analingus look up analingus that's how they would put it h by laurie blah 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 camp Lebecca. wow that's what the h stands for helicopter uh, he look he look back that's it can you get it from eating ass? uh i don't think there's enough evidence wait wait, wait. that first question yeah yeah up there uh, it, go up no that's it oh there it is uh h pylori may be transmitted during okay okay go, go back i'm sorry Oh, I see what Tom feels now. I don't think there's enough research. I've been reading up on it. Okay, I agree with that first one. I don't think there's really to say that there is, but here's a here's another thing that says Yeah. Mm. I don't think washing your hands is gonna help with that. No. That's all right, okay. Hepatitis A, herpes, hold on. Gonorrhea, HPV, many other parasites and bacterial disease. I, I don't know. H. pylori always is in the upper end of the GI tract. So just like don't eat ass of like uh, like I, from I people from think, the Congo or something where they have really crazy. I don't know how H. pylori is transmitted. I, I, I don't know. I uh, Let's see. Show me how do you get H. pylori. Yeah, H. pylori <laughs> transmission. Look up H. pylori transmission. Yeah. Ooh, he's quick though. Okay, H. pylori may pass from person to person through direct contact with saliva vomit or fecal matter okay uh contaminated food you can get it from water. kissing yeah i think of it more as up top yeah it's more in the mouth and esophagus hmm. i mean that's where it lives that's where it does oh so you just so you could just make out with a dirty person not dirty it's really common again 
I, I'm not a, a lot is made of H. pylori. I, I, I am not a uh, enthusiast. I've seen many people attempt to eradicate it and not and still be okay. I, I don't know. Okay. To talk to a gastroenterologist about All it. Right. But anyway, um, she can do enemas, right? Enemas clean things up very nicely. And uh, yeah, and be careful. The shower is good. Do it in the shower even. might be better. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd also recommend maybe getting a bidet, a washlet, and uh, douche in that butthole before sessions. And just think about how much easier it's going to be for you to wipe your ass when you're 50 pounds lighter. <sighs> gonna be just, uh, just i mean freedom I don't, I don't freedom have, i don't have difficulty now but sure it'll get easier freedom. well that's why the bidet is such a, a thing for you you like it it's a game changer no no no. it's not because i have trouble wiping drew <laughs> i'm just giving what? you shit i'm just saying okay all right dear booth boys <laughs> dear booth boys and respected medical practitioner turn to brown and white spokesperson mm. josh gets it here i also love the gag sounds i can't help but laugh every time i hear it i have a fear of vomiting which both my dad and brother also have I believe that I cope with said fear by laughing at the heaving sound. Maybe this is the same for you. No, I would laugh at you trying to avoid you laughing at reacting to the heaving sound. That's what's funny to me. The chick that has the heaving tendency that her husband thinks. Right, the gag couple. Yeah, The gag couple. It's her. She's laughing about it. That's Mm -hmm. what makes it kind of digestible. If she were really upset. I, I. What's funny is his glee. The fact that it's so easy to trigger. Oh, true. And that she has no control over it and does it even when she's defiantly not going to do it. That's funny. And then she kind of laughs every time. If you And by the way, women, if you really want a guy to stop doing something, do not giggle or laugh at what they're doing. Really. Yeah, just, just don't break eye contact don't, and like, throw hey, up. No, stop that shit. You know, be like Annie. That shit don't roll here. <laughs> right? Oh, we don't play that shit. It's yeah. true. It works. It yeah. works every time. Yeah. Um, but I think also like it, what also what makes it funny is that if she act like because it's dry heaving so it's almost like throwing up without any consequence oh, if she threw up I'd be upset right if she unhappy. actually threw yeah. up every time I'd be like yeah. oh my god yeah girl, no 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 know? that I would not go for yeah it's it's just that it's so easy to trigger it he's gleeful about it right she laughs always but her like oh no no we're not going to do this that's funny she shouldn't even open with that mm-hmm. she just go okay here we go <laughs> and here, here it comes that would not be so funny uh, so, uh, I think a horrible or hilarious since we've been talking about Susan's horrible, or hilarious. Oh yeah. Let's, let's take look at a couple. Yeah, of we those. got a couple of these to, to run you through. All right. These are always bad for me. Uh-oh. Oh, oh my God. Well, he actually broke his arm, didn't he? Yeah. Oh he, he boy. Broke it pretty bad. Oh uh, boy. And that's what these guys do, man. It's weird to me how they... Uh, they don't normally break their arms. <laughs> no, I know, but they, they put themselves into positions where they easily could. Although I will say that from the way that he felt, you wouldn't think that he was going to do that. You Co- wouldn't think that it was going to break the Correct, way that going to. but they're, they're essentially falling from like eight feet. And that that you're that's not going to feel good. Yeah, unless we forget when yeah. uh, uh, mankind uh, threw Undertaker off Hell in a Cell back in the day. And what happened? You threw him off like 40 feet of, uh, of a cage. And what happened? It was just an earth-shattering event. Did he survive? Yeah. I don't know anything about this. It was life-changing. It was crazy. A lot of people's lives changed after that moment. Why? It's just you fucking see a man thrown off hell of a cell. You know, things change. Should I see it? Should I look at it now? <laughs> I don't think we can. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. And and when, you're, that so moment saying, kind of got away from me. And you're, saying, <laughs> you're saying it's not hilarious. It's horrible. No, yeah. It was pretty crazy to watch. It was. Okay. I was way too young when I saw it. And, and did they, they did it on purpose? Like this was a stunt thing? Yeah, or? it was pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta bring it. Never forget hell in the cell, dude. All right. Next horrible or hilarious, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, okay. wheeling. Oh, is that oh, oh, that was bad. Oh boy, that person is not moving. Yeah. That's horrible. The other one was sort of hilarious. It, I like the, the first, the first, first part of that was sort of hilarious because you could tell he was fine and was not wearing any protective gear, which is like it's not going to be that fine. She, she's. Oh wait, they weren't wearing a helmet. Well, she slid on the street with her bare legs and bare arms. Oh yeah, don't make it. It's not the that. yeah. That's, there's gonna be there's gonna be a price for that, but it was sort of hilarious. See, look, look, look. See, no nothing on her arms or legs. Oh boy. Oh, 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 we can get road rash on his neck. That might be a neck break. That might neck be a neck break. Fracture. Yeah, that could be a neck fracture. 
can you tell me yeah. what kind of neck break can you survive and what kind because like when you go like to like see like golden eye movies to do like one of like one yeah. of those yeah and then people are just dead like how hard do you need to twist so there's a couple of different things so really what what we're seeing here mm -hmm. is the neck goes so far into extension that it subluxes that it slips out from under itself and cuts the cord so you're getting a spinal cord cut at the you know probably C two C three level on that particular guy, that's why you see his arms are all splayed out, legs are all splayed out. They, he can't move them. He's done. But isn't it and once you cut the cord? Maybe it's because he's just knocked out though. Mm, no, that was mostly a neck thing. If you want, do you want to see it again? I sure do. Okay. Here we go. All right, first wheelie, pretty sick. That guy Second makes wheelie through. doesn't go as planned. That neck deal. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, that was a lot of neck action. Yeah, and that's that's like when when uh, uh, what's his name Christopher Reeves fell off his horse. That's mm -hmm. exactly what he did. He okay, slid on his neck. For that a couple like that. Feet. That's the injury. Is that and it's you see that 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 is your neck breaking. Okay. Now you can you can get oh, this is a lot more terrifying in slow mo. I know. Jesus. I saw what happened there. So that dude's done. Uh, you can also. You hit your your top your very top cervical. Um, look up the odontoid and cervical spine. Odontoid process, odontoid process and cervical spine, and we'll need some images of that. Odontoid process, cervical spine, C spine, C spine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now give me a picture. Okay. Uh, these aren't very good. Maybe the one of the... Yeah, the we're blood. getting there. Hold on here. Okay, maybe... Mm, you can't really mm. see it. So uh, so the bottom line is that you have a you have this thing that sticks up through your first cervical vertebra. And that thing can be pushed into your brain. Uh, and that's that's what one of the ways you die by hanging. It's one of the things that happens when you're hung is that the odontoid... Is, that's why they put a big fucking thing back here is to break all that and to break your neck and to Wait, push Wait, what thing do they put back A big there? knot, a big, you know, those big coils. That uh -huh. they, you know, they, that's not just to hold them. That's also to put some energy into the back of the spine. You know what I'm talking about? Look Jesus at, Christ. I know. thought back in the day when they hung people, they didn't have that encyclopedia to know to do it. Well, like some of them just choked them to death. But when they're doing it like uh, sort of from a height. Show me a noose. Yeah, that's what they're looking for. That's. <laughs> So, so I'm guessing that sometimes the uh, see the big knots on the, the back, mm, yeah. the old slip knot. Yeah, it's not even a slip. I don't know what the hell that is. Is it a slip knot? Would be that's not a slip knot. Well, a slip knot is is uh, the uh, it is it, it's a slip knot of sorts, but it's the fact that it's coiled <laughs> around somebody. It times. is a knot that slips. Yeah, right, exactly. But a slip knot yeah. usually is just one coil. This is multiple coils. Mm. Um, so, so that's just at least that's what like I was taught to that's, push stuff. To, to break the neck and break the odontoid, particularly so you're dead instantly. <laughs> that's so fucking tough. Uh, I think I be, that's what I was taught. That that's okay. the case. I don't know much about you know about this kind of stuff. But um, why did I bring this up? Oh, so I think some of the 007 stuff is that. Gotcha. They're trying to do that. So they're just replicating. I don't know that it's actually really that games. possible because I think what you're it's pretty hard to do that. Now you ask, what kind of can you survive? Mm -hmm. You can survive like when you hit here, you can get compression fractures right. in the vertebral bodies, no but problem. That, but then that doesn't get pushed. No, no problem. You can break the. Show me a, just a cervical spine, uh, uh, and you'll see that there are transverse processes off the spine too. Oh, look at this, cervical spine. Uh, give me some more. Uh, okay, just give me a large one of that. The, the one, the second one. No, no, second one. That you see how there's those these things that come off to the side. Mm -hmm. those, those are, are nerves, those, right? Well, the nerve, but there's these bony things that come off too. They're called transverse processes. You can break those. You can even break a vertebral body as long as it doesn't get displaced into the spine. And the problem is, once it's broken, it's unstable, and you have to be careful about that. But it's it's not the same thing as what you saw in that motorcycle ride. God, aren't, so aren't much can happen to your neck. Yes, so much can happen to everything. Look, there are libraries filled with medical exotica that can happen to you. Yeah, there's so much to Follow learn. Mrs. Underscore and Jemmy. I got to get her in here one of these days. Mm. I've said that before. Would you bring her in? Let's get her in by Zoom or something. Sure. She brings medical exotica to life. Mrs. Look at, let's go. Can we do her Instagram? Are we allowed to put that up? 
I think so. Mrs. Yeah. Underscore and Jemmy. A N G E M I. She's a friend of mine and she's a medical pathologist. And uh, Nicole and Jemmy, there you go. Instagram, good. And take a look at all the stuff she puts up. Uh, all kinds of oh, stuff. Oh, I don't know if we can show this. So Why? Far, no, you, so far, the, so you're good. weak stomached? No, it's not weak stomached. It's just, you know, YouTube has, you know, standards and practices. These are just abscesses and, you the know. The guy's doing surgery on himself. I don't think yeah, there's sure. Nicole. That's her picture of Nicole with her tats all the way to her chin. There she is. Hello, Nicole. So we, she'd be good on here, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, one of these days we'll bring her in here. All right, so that's all. She's all looking at exotic medical stuff there. So, all right. Voice message, please. Is that the enough hilarious? Horrible? I think so. <laughs> I've ruined your horrible, horrible. No, yeah, this thing. is such a bigger bummer I, than what I thought would, it was. What would Tom do with with me? Because he laughs at this shit so much. I think he'd he'd take it and he'd like it because he'd no, be I like, think I spoil it for him. Well, yeah, sure. If you're just like, oh no, no, no this guy's actually really hurt, yeah. right? Because I think that does soften the laugh for him, where it's oh, not yeah, as it funny when he <laughs> not sees as funny. the gravity. All right, here, give me a voice message. Hey, Dr. Mommy and the Booth Boys. My name's Joseph. Uh, I got a question about white. Yeah, any you might want to check out for this one. <laughs> Me and the lads were talking about how sperm can live inside of the female body for a certain amount of time. And I was wondering, if I'm with the nice young lady and she was with some other guy, let's say a day or two ago, and that guy finishes inside of her, uh-huh. When I make sweet premarital love to her, is that guy's wife going to be on my dick? Because if that's the case, uh, I'm out. I, I'm out. I'm going celibate. Anyways, uh, love the show. Thanks for answering any of these questions. Yeah. You bet I'll be coming up in May. You bet I will, sir. I need to see uh, him again. What A you guys prolapse? Call? No, no, no. See the coming up in May guy again. It's been, no. uh, the old, old, he, he's another thing we need to revisit because his mm. shit is coming up all the time. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, the white is out very fast. It doesn't, it actually falls out pretty quick. You know, so your oh, yeah. vagina, vagina sort of cleans that all out. The sperm is left behind for three to five days. Ooh. And the sperm goes in through the cervix and up into the uterus and up into the tubes. And it sits there and it waits for an egg. It, that's why you can take emergency contraceptives for up to five days because if you suppress the ovulation math did always you prevent the prevent the egg from getting to the sperm you don't prevent implantation you <laughs> prevent the egg from being released so that sperm is sitting there for three to five days here's the interesting thing there's some evidence that your sperm will fight with his sperm like literally, there's warrior sperm in the, like, on both sides. Welcome and, to the Thunderdome. And they my and, jizz and, your jizz. Yeah, and they will. They his sperm will try to fight out you to push yours out and now, kill your sperm. Now here's an interesting thing. I don't know if I read this, I watched this, or I dreamt it. <laughs> but <laughs> this should be good. <laughs> <laughs> from what I, I remember seeing somewhere, where they said that the shape of the penis is actually also kind of like like a scooper or like the, the, the plunger of a syringe where say, for example, a woman has, you know, had sex with multiple dudes in one day. It's almost like your penis going in and out is also kind of sucking out all the jizz out of her so that your jizz could go in. Yeah. And you, I think you probably heard something, but twisted it. Uh, so I dreamed. This. You may have turned the, the, what you heard into a dream or something, but why but would there, I there's a about... lot of weird, there's a lot of, <laughs> but just, so you know, there, <laughs> There's a uh, lot of weird okay. observational stuff out there about the mechanics of the vagina and the uterus. For instance, some people have taken the position that during orgasm, the uterus pulls up, and that, that creates some sort of sucking action that will pull the sperm oh, yeah. into the into the cervix. I don't know that that's true. Mm. By the same token, the pushing into the penis might push some pressure, again, towards the cervix. No, no, no. I know it's you're saying head. you're scooping out. Well, no, it's the head because it's – I don't – like, I don't know what this even... Maybe you were talking about some animals that had prongs on their penises or right, something. Right, like duck dicks or something. Yeah, this is not... <laughs> duck dicks, good. I like yeah. that. The corkscrew dicks. Yeah, the qua- qualic, uh, qua- qua- but, qualia. Let's go ducks. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'd say no. I'd say generally speaking, not a big deal. The, 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 the male thing is... 
about getting into the cervix fast and getting up into those tubes and getting those eggs. And there's nothing about the human dick that gets no, other gets really. old jizz out of there. No, mm, the jizz is out pretty when fast. When the fuck did I hear that? Yeah. So, so wait, so your answer to this guy is that his dick is not touching cum. Also, why would I clock out for this? C- cum is not a... Yeah, I know. It's not yeah, your thing. And he know. loves cum. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah, he digs, <laughs> he digs that's, these conversations. That's so <laughs> not where I wanted that to go. But yeah. So, so I, I think if up maybe up to 24 hours Hours, there could be a little something left behind, I suppose, you know. But Wait, it, you just said three to five days, though. No, no, the, For the sperm. sperm. Oh, okay. So it's this not touching c- cum, but it's touching the babies. His sperm, <laughs> your sperm will get to his sperm way up inside the body, yeah. not outside the body. Your penis will be outside the body, but the sperm will get inside the body and have a little war there with his sperm. The semen, which is outside the body, gets cleared out pretty quick. Does that all make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. Don't call so, me daddy. So, so Don't call me daddy. Yes. Yeah, so what you're saying is basically, after I am outside a woman, three to five days later, I am then inside her. At least a part. You were of still me. In, by proxy. You were, yeah. you were still inside her. Parts yes. of you were still inside. Hell her. yeah, dude. Still inside. Fuck yeah. yeah bro. We did it, dude. We got inside, <laughs> yeah. boy. Yeah. Let's get it. Yeah. yeah. Parts of you were still inside her then, uh, ready to do war with whoever else delivers something to be inside her. Right. Yeah, it's interesting biology, isn't it? And, <laughs> yeah, well, and people get yeah, all freaked out I about it because we can't use a we can't use a hormone after sex because it impairs implantation. All hormones impair implantation. All the hormonal contraceptives have an effect on implantation. So if you're going to say that any effect on implantation is an abortion, and I can't support that, then you have to eliminate all hormonal contraceptives. Okay, fuck that. Before or after intercourse, they all have some theoretic possibility. Their predominant mechanism of action is preventing the egg from being released. All of them. Mm. So it's a remote effect of the implantation if you fail to suppress the egg, which is why it's important to take that emergency contraceptive as soon as possible. The sooner you take it, the less the, that three-day window of fertility, the less that, that that egg will be have been released in that period. I Does see. that all make sense, everybody? I think so. This year, one more voicemail. We're having a good time with the voice. Yeah, we are. <laughs> my name's Jack, and recently me and my uh, big-titted animal purchased a uh, cock ring, and uh, I happen to have a large piece on me, and this cock ring happens to be a little bit on the small side. Uh-oh. So when uh, me and my big-titted animal use it, um, my dick happens to get really dark red. Ooh. And uh, I just want to know if that's unhealthy, if we should invest in a bigger cock yes, ring. Yes, get no, a bigger uh, one. Yeah, what yeah. are you yeah. doing? Yes. Punch my camera through the fence, you <laughs> he knew he knew we'd be reacting. So yeah, I mean there are things I was uh get a I, bigger cock ring through the fence, my dude. I, I also want to get this urologist in here, uh Dr. Winter, who is really cool and fun. And I saw she was tweeting some stuff the other day about how it's important to keep having erections because if you let your penis stay deflated all the time, it scars. And you can actually lose some size that way. If you don't use it, you lose it. It, it sort of scars down. And I worry that you're going to get scarring of the other direction from excessive, you know, sort of who knows what kind of capillary right. eruption. Like it'll like there. it'll be a balloon that he inflated too much and yeah. then it just kind of it's, gets it's, a little loosey goosey. Something like that. But I worry more about the vascular supply and that kind of stuff and that there's scarring around that. Get so a bigger cock ring. Get a bigger C ring. And, and, but good for you for... Uh, Writing into the show with yes, this question, yes. <laughs> and, for, and for doing what you need to do for your girlfriend, good for you. All right, everybody, uh, thank you. Did we give? Did we cover all the territory? Did you get everything you needed to say here? I think so, man. It's always a blast with you. It is always, but and and thank you for not bringing horrible, horrible videos this time. Last time you were on this show, you brought me a lot of RPC stuff that I've still not gotten over. Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was RPC or you know animal coming or something like that, or me coming. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't need that, but but it was. Uh, thank you for not bringing any of that stuff in here this time. This we is all fun, yeah. your mom's house fun. We appreciate it. Appreciate you guys again. Keep sending Susan those good news. How does she get the? Where do they come in for her? She, with the positive feedback that she gets is on. I think she's just reading YouTube comments YouTube, or something. Yeah, Twitter. Any what's that? No, uh, he he got it. I was gonna say comments. Yeah, mm-hmm. YouTube comments. Uh, but you know, tag her on Twitter. She's at First Lady of Love. If if uh, show her some love and teach, that'll keep her coming back in here. Keep yeah. Her. And Lord knows we need her back in here. Well, she'll be here. Don't you worry. I keep keeping her out. It's gonna be the problem now. I think. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it again. The number is eight one eight two five three one six nine three for all the voice messages and the emails at drdraftdarkgmail dot com and store dot ymhstudios dot com. Rational Revolution. Everybody, hold that cup with pride. And uh, don't forget drdrew.com slash shop. Nailed it. Where you can get those uh, bobbleheads. We'll, we'll see you next time. 
All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.